Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at molecular orbitals. We're going to start by looking at the formation of molecular orbitals, then we'll have a look at the implications for bonding within the noble gases, and then we will look at the bonding continuum. The molecular orbital model is used to describe chemical bonding. So far in advanced higher chemistry you've looked at atomic orbitals and electrons being found within atomic or orbitals. You've looked at S, P, D and F orbitals and you found that they will fill up uh, going from low energy to high energy, that they are full when they've got two electrons and those two electrons have to have opposite spin. Electrons within molecular orbitals, which are found in molecules, fill in exactly the same way. They fill from lowest energy to highest energy, they are full when they have two electrons within them and when their spins are opposite. Molecular orbitals form when we bring together two atoms to form a bond and the two atomic orbitals then uh, combine to form molecular orbitals. However many atomic orbitals you combine together is however many molecular orbitals you will get out. For example, if we bring together two atomic orbitals, we will get two molecular orbitals being produced. You'll get one of lower energy which will be the bonding molecular orbital and one of higher en energy which will be the anti-bonding orbital. The bonding orbital forms the traditional version of the covalent bond with two, the two nuclei within the orbital with the shared pair of electrons between them that are being shared between the two positive nuclei. The anti-bonding orbital does not include the nuclei and the electron density is not between them therefore there is no attraction to hold them together. We're going to exemplify this by looking at uh, by looking at hydrogen. So if we have two atomic orbitals for hydrogen, these are the 1s orbitals, and each hydrogen atom has one electron within it. If we then bring these together, so we have these two circular orbitals, we bring them together to overlap so that we can form a covalent bond. We then form these two molecular orbitals. One of them is of lower energy than the two atomic orbitals that made it, so that is a more stable place to be. And this is where we find the two electrons, which will have opposite spins. And this is where you find your hydrogen molecule. This is the bonding orbital. And in this case, it's given a symbol of sigma. I'll put a link below in the description box to the next video which looks at hybridisation where we'll talk about sigma and pi bonds and where they come from. If we were to draw a picture of this bonding orbital it would be something like this where we have the two nuclei within the bonding orbital and the shaded area everywhere around them is where we can find the electrons. So we have this electron density between the two nuclei. The higher energy orbital which forms, which is not full because we've only got two electrons, is what we call the anti-bonding orbital. And that is given the symbol of sigma star. So a sigma star orbital with the star there, it means that it's anti-bonding. And if we were to try and draw a picture of this, we would have the two nuclei and the molecular orbital itself would look like it was in these two parts on the outside of the nuclei. So there's no attraction in between there for the electrons, so there is no bond. So the anti-bonding goes against the bonding and therefore it stops it from happening. If, there, if it's empty and you've only got electrons in your bonding orbital, then you have bonds that have formed. The molecular orbital model allows us to explain why noble gases exist as monatomic gases and therefore they don't bond with anything else. You've known before it's because they have a full outer shell of electrons and that they're stable and the molecular orbital model actually allows you to prove that. So if we have a look at helium. So helium has two electrons in the 1s orbital. So we've got our two 1s orbitals. If we then bring our two helium atoms together in an attempt to make an He2, then we will form two molecular orbitals. 
one of those will be lower in energy this will be our sigma and one of them will be higher in energy our sigma star so we have sigma here and sigma star we then need to fill up with however many electrons we have from the lowest energy molecular orbital to the highest energy molecular orbital so we have four electrons in total to put in so if we start at the bottom we're going to have one and then opposite spin so two then three then four as you can see here we have filled up the anti-bonding molecular orbital that cancels out the electrons within our bonding orbital and therefore we don't have a bond this is the reason why the noble gases do not bond and if you were to draw this out for any of them you would see the same thing happening where you would fill both the bonding and the anti-bonding orbital which means that we don't have any bonding happening if you look at this from an energetic point of view you have two electrons put into a lower energy orbital and two electrons put into a higher energy orbital but overall energetically this is no different than having them in their original atomic orbitals therefore the bonding won't happen finally we're going to look at the bonding continuum so in national five you would have looked at ionic bonding and covalent bonding ionic bonding being transfer of electrons and covalent bonding being sharing of electrons in higher we brought in polar covalent bonding where we had ionic bonding as transfer of electrons polar covalent bonding where you have a covalent bond of sharing electrons but the electrons are closer to one of the atoms than the other and then pure covalent bonding where you have the electrons shared equally between the two atoms and you were able to look at this from a point of view of electronegativity and you knew the larger the difference in electronegativity the more ionic the compound you would have and then if the difference in electronegativity was zero then you knew that you were at the pure covalent end of the bonding continuum we're now going to have a look at this from the point of view of the molecular orbital and the shape and position of the molecular orbital between the two nuclei that you're trying to bond together so if we start with ionic over here we'll have polar covalent in the middle and pure covalent here so in an ionic bond you have fully transferred an electron from one atom to the other that means that the molecular orbital will fully sit over what will be the negative electron negative ion as the electron has been completely transferred so you end up having a positive and then a negative so we have full transfer of electron from one to the other meaning that our molecular orbital our bonding molecular orb orbital is over the negative ion for polar covalent you have two nuclei which are still sharing electrons but they are closer to one of the nuclei than to the other because it has a higher electronegativity so the shape of our molecular orbital would be more over the more electronegative atom than it would be over the other and then finally the pure covalent bond is where your molecular orbital is evenly spread over both of the nuclei Thank you for watching my video i hope that you found it helpful please remember to subscribe if you've not already and follow me on twitter at miss adams kim for regular updates on new videos bye